You ever walk through an old barn, a centuries-old ship, or even a rustic cabin, and wonder why some of that timber looks untouched by time while the surrounding wood has rotted away. There's a reason why certain structures have survived not just decades, but centuries. Today, we're going to explore an old-world technique so effective that it was erased from modern practice smoke timber. This is not just a curiosity. It's a window into how our ancestors protected their most vital resources and how you can apply that knowledge today, whether for historical restoration, survival, or long-term woodworking projects. Stay with me because what I'm about to explain has practical implications you'll rarely hear anywhere else. Smoked timber was more than decoration. It was engineered for survival. The use of smoked timber stretches back to Viking shipbuilders, medieval architects, and even early colonial settlers. This wasn't an aesthetic choice. It was a deliberate method to preserve wood against the relentless attack of insects, fungi, and moisture. When timber is exposed to controlled smoke over long periods, it undergoes a chemical transformation. The heat and smoke essentially bake the wood while depositing compounds like phenols and tarry substances deep into the fibres. These substances act as natural insecticides and antifungal agents. Termites, wood-boring beetles, and even mould find it extremely unpalatable. What's remarkable is that timber treated in this way can resist decay for hundreds of years, often outlasting untreated timber in more modern constructions. It's easy to think of smoked timber as simply burnt wood. In reality, the process changes the wood's internal structure. Controlled smoke exposure drives out moisture and increases the lignin to cellulose ratio. Lignin is the part of the wood that resists compression and decay, while cellulose is more easily consumed by insects. By increasing lignin concentration and embedding phenolic compounds from the smoke, the timber becomes both harder and chemically hostile to pests. This is why ancient Viking ships, which spent years in brackish water, survived far longer than their untreated counterparts. Even centuries later, when archaeologists recover wood from shipwrecks, smoked timber often remains remarkably intact. Not all smoked timber was created equally. Vikings were known for building pits near water where timber could be slowly smoked over smouldering pine or oak. In Japan, a similar technique called shu sugi ban involved charring the outer surface of the wood with fire, then lightly brushing it to reveal a durable, insect-resistant layer beneath. European settlers often used smokehouses and tar pits to achieve similar effects, layering the wood in smoke for weeks at a time. What ties these methods together is the recognition that heat and smoke are not just preservation techniques, they're chemical weapons against decay. You don't need to be a professional carpenter or own a smoke pit to apply these lessons. Even small-scale projects like, say, garden structures, outdoor furniture, or storage sheds can benefit. One practical method is to create a controlled smoke chamber using a metal drum or perhaps a brick pit. Use hardwood chips or pine bark, keep the fire smouldering, not flaming, and expose the timber for several days to a week, depending on its thickness. The goal is slow impregnation of the wood with the smoke's natural compounds. For a simpler approach, lightly charring the surface with a propane torch mimics the Japanese method and provides an insect-resistant outer layer. For survivalists or prepper enthusiasts, knowing how to produce this timber can mean structures that last decades without chemical treatments. 
In addition to insects, smoked wood actually repels moisture. The heat and smoke reduce hygroscopic properties, meaning the wood absorbs less water from rain, snow, or humidity. This is why medieval bridges and Viking docks survived for generations. For a modern application, you could use smoke planks for outdoor decks, raised beds, or shelters. Unlike conventional pressure-treated wood, smoke timber avoids synthetic chemicals and toxins while providing natural durability. It's really an intersection of history and practical engineering, a technique proven by centuries of trial and survival. Some of the most famous examples come from Scandinavian shipyards. Viking longships stored in smoke-treated pits have been recovered from marshes where other wooden artefacts completely disintegrated. Similarly, old barns in Germany and England, where timber was routinely smoked before construction, remain standing while modern untreated buildings nearby have collapsed. These historical cases provide more than anecdotal evidence. They offer a blueprint for modern preservation. By studying the depth of smoke penetration, the type of wood used, and exposure duration, we can replicate these results with remarkable accuracy today. Smoked timber doesn't have to stand alone. For anyone serious about prepping or long-term off-grid living, combining smoked timber with natural oils or resins increases longevity even further. For example, after smoking, applying linseed oil or pine resin seals the wood, enhancing water resistance without losing insect protection. This layered approach is exactly what historical builders did, sometimes unknowingly, by combining tar, smoke, and natural resins. The result is a structure that can survive generations with minimal maintenance, a concept highly relevant for modern survivalist communities. Learning about smoke timber is not just about nostalgia. It's about respecting and utilizing centuries-old knowledge that modern chemistry has mostly replaced. Understanding these methods allows historians to reconstruct authentic historical environments, helps architects design sustainable timber projects, and provides survivalists with strategies for durable shelters without relying on industrial preservatives. In short, smoked timber is a bridge between the ingenuity of the past and practical applications today. In conclusion, smoke timber is a lesson from history that works in the present. When you next see a centuries-old structure that survived insect infestations, you're likely looking at wood treated with fire and smoke. It's more than a craft, it's applied science. And the beauty of it is that this technique is accessible even now. Whether for historical reconstructions, long-lasting outdoor projects, or survivalist shelters, smoked timber provides natural protection that synthetic treatments often can't match. By taking a lesson from the Vikings, medieval Europeans, and Japanese craftsmen, we can build structures that not only endure time, but tell a story of human ingenuity and resilience. If this dive into Forgotten Wood Preservation inspired you, don't forget to subscribe to Forgotten Frontlines for more insights into history's hidden techniques. Share this with fellow history enthusiasts and survivalists who appreciate methods that are as practical today as they were centuries ago. Knowledge like this is meant to be passed on, not forgotten.